And welcome to The Crochet Crowd. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is a learn how to knit from the absolute beginning to do a knit hat. I know, crochet channel knitting, what gives? So in 2022, just a, a few months ago, I decided that I really want to start learning to how to knit. And I asked Yarn Inspirations, what is a great hat to be able to get, begin learning to knit on? And they pointed me to this. Because this pattern actually has all of the step-by-step, -step, not only um, it will be video today, but you can also see that it has all the different photographs so that it has a photographic tutorial. So I decided, okay, I'm thinking about this. So I started knitting officially in 2022, September 11th. And I am now just a couple months into this whole thing. And I am really quite excited about it because as each step that I do, I'm getting better and I'm getting faster. So the only way to get faster at things is to be able to practice. So I have the sample here and I originally did this back in September of this hat and now I'm ready to officially film it. So um, it's a really great idea in order to go. So today's tutorial that I'm going to teach you is from apps for absolute beginners. So I'm going to be taking my time, lots of pauses, and hopefully get a knitted hat ready for you. And it's a really neat concept. So this hat is done as a flat panel, then join at the back. But here on the channel, if you don't want that and you want something in the round, we already have that filmed. So today we're going to begin to learn to knit from the very beginning. So if you're new with me, I like to do a pattern review before we begin our tutorials. If you want to skip it, just go to the video description, open it up, and you'll see all the time markers for the different sections that we have in this video. As we begin, you're going to notice is that there's a purl stitch, a knit stitch, and then a K2 together, so knit two stitches together. Those are the only three stitches that you're going to need to, uh, to know today. This is a very easy repeat once we get moving on this thing, and you're going to find it's going to work itself out. So let's begin the cast on process. It says it needs 70 stitches. So it says cast on, uh, showing the information, which I'll show you with the slip knot. And then it says cast on, then 69 more stitches. So we need a total of 70 here at the end. So without further ado, I'm gonna show you a long tail cast on using two needles put together. So regardless if it's circular or not, the concept is still gonna be the same. The first step you need to do, grab the yarn. Now I'm right-handed, you're watching a right-handed tutorial. The ball should be up away from you like so. I'm sitting here, the ball is right here. And you don't want the ball on this side because it's gonna feed into your right hand as you go. Because of tutorial work, um, usually we have left and right hand videos. In knitting, it matters on the way that it appears. So if you're looking for left-handed, you gotta find a different host because I can't do it left. So what I want you to do, just with the tail coming out of the yarn ball, and I'm using Red Heart Super Saver Ombre in the color of Anthracite, so you'll notice the colors will change on its own. I want you to pull um, two good arm load, or arm width. So just uh, hold it and just open your, as if you're doing a yawn, and do one and two. It's more generous than what you need, but it's a good start in order to have it, and in time, you will get to know what that distance should be a little more accurately. Now, this is going on my lap, and this is going to the yarn ball. Let's create a slip knot. To do that, see this finger? I want you to rotate this around the finger twice. I will demonstrate it three times, so that was once. So just grab onto it, so I'm just holding it, and go this finger twice. So once and twice. One more time. Just grab onto it and just go once and twice. Once you have that done, just open your hand and put it so that both of the strands are coming down and that your hand is locked and that these are on. My goal is, is to move this one over. If you know a better way to slip knot, then please do so. So I wanna move this one over, but not off my finger. So over, and then using my finger to, to pinch the other one and bring it over top of your finger like that. Okay, and that's your slip knot that you'll start with. So, okay, so let's do it again. So nice and slow, I'll do it with you. So this is this one, and you wanna move it over top of the first one, but not over top of the finger, just hold. Now grab the other one in the back and just go up and over, and there's your slip knot. A lot of different ways to do slip knots. This is the way that I most prefer. Once you have this done, we're now going to grab your knitting needles and begin the process to cast on itself. 
So regardless if it's circular or if it's straight needles, you want, you want to put them together like this. And I want you to take the slip knot and put it onto both needles so it's around both. And grabbing the one strand, pull it so that it's snug to your needles, but not tight that you can't move them. What we're doing is that we're making the nice, uh, easy um, starting so that it's nice and flexible at the, at the beginning of your project, where your brim or your forehead would be. Let's put out a yarn and let's start figuring how to get the rest on there. I want you to put this, this is towards the yarn ball, this is towards my lap. Use your two fingers and you just wanna come up and come underneath the two. And then raise up your hand and let them capture around your thumb and your pointer finger. And using your hands, do this. We'll show again. It's a beginner tutorial, so I'm taking my time. So down, underneath, open your hands and shift up. And using your three fingers, grab those strands that are going towards the yarn ball and towards your lap. One more for good measure. In time, you will get really, really quick at this. So just down, up, and pinch. So you have this formation in your hands. So let's begin. I want you, we're gonna grab this strand here. So we're gonna say, this is how I say it in my head. So I say palm and move up to the thumb to capture and make sure both needles are capturing it. Then rotate your hand and wrap this finger around the two needles. but you're not done, see your thumb, I want you to flip that over top of the two needles. And just with your hands, pull back, holding onto the strands, and this will tighten everything up. So put it back into your hands. And in time, you don't have to keep resetting fully from scratch. So I want you to go from the palm, capturing both, both of the needles, rotate your hand around, and put on and use your thumb to flip over. Kind of reminds me of a lighter. Okay, and then kind of shift it down a little bit. So reset and palm. Rotate around and capture and flip. We'll do a few more. You want a total of 70 loops on these needles, but I'm just going to put about 10 and then I'll show you what to do. Okay, so palm, wrap, and flip. Palm, wrap, and flip. palm, wrap, and flip. So I can see that I have eight stitches here. There's eight loops, so each one is a stitch. And I wanna put just two more, and then I'll show you what to do. We need a total of 70 altogether, but we're gonna to have to reset ourselves. So just pull things nice and tight. If you end up with one stitch that it doesn't look the same as the rest, you'll see it later on, so be consistent. So palm, wrap, and flip. So now we can't be knitting with both of these at the same time in while we do the project. So I want you just to hold on to the project and remove the top needle out. Okay, so I'm holding on to the bottom needle and the project work itself and pull out. And what this has done is that it's created the loop so it has more space. So the very nice will have a nice beginning to start the next one, I want you then to just 
put the needle underneath like this and do another 10. So just put it, sandwich it, okay? And then reset the yarn in your hands and begin again. So do you see I caught it in between? So my needles are too far apart, so I'm just gonna just take that out and try again. If you see something wrong, you have to adjust immediately. This is not something that you can mess around with. So my needles were not at the same height like this, so I wanna try again. Capture both and around and flip. So these new ones are going around both, and yet these are already off. And what this is doing is it just giving me more space to play on to put more on, I guess you can say. So you could do another 10 or 20, it doesn't really matter, as long as you just release the needles out within a good time, uh, within a good distance, that is easy for you to maintain. Do you see that? So when you think you have enough, I would do a lot more than this, but I would hold on to the bottom project Sorry, I'm gonna hold on to the top of the project now because this is on the top needle and I'm gonna pull the bottom one out and then you can reset again and start more. So I would do a whack, which in my slang means just many and just start counting when you think that you're close to 70 and then that's where I'm gonna pick you up at the end of this. So continue to cast on. If you have other ways of casting on, by all means, you can try things. Um, this is all about beginning stages of learning to knit. So this is what I would recommend. So what I'll do is that I will get back to you when I have 70 of these loops that you can count and I will begin to start row number one. So now I have a total of 70 loops. I've counted three times just to make sure because I get a little bit paranoid about that. And I'm gonna cut the yarn about of maybe a foot long, eight inches to a foot, 12 inches. And I'm gonna use that just to hide the tails in later and any extra that I use from the long tail cast on, I'm gonna put in the garbage. So now what we have to do is that we have to reposition the knitting needles in our hand. So we have the knitting needles that are the knitting needle that is full of the yarn. And if you've used two sticks, the other one is going to be empty. But if you're using the circulars, it's just going to look like this. And what we need to do is to start row number one. So row number one is going to get this pattern started. And then row number two that I'll show you in just a few moments is that we are just going to repeat rows one and two all the way to the end of the project until we get to the top area where we're gonna start decreasing those stitches in order to uh, like shape to the crown of the head. Let's begin row number one. To begin row number one, I want to position the yarn into my hand. So this is going to the yarn ball. This is just the tail end that I cut short. The way that I like to put the yarn into my hands, it's called traditional English knitting. And so I use my finger, my pinky right here, and I'm just going to wrap the yarn around like this. So I just scoop it with my pinky, and then I come up through my hand and then over top of the finger like that. I'm used to crocheting, so I'm not scared of the yarn falling out of my hands. And in time, as you begin to learn knitting, you're going to get more confident that it's not going to stress you out as much. So grab it with your pinky and rotate once, and then come in the front of your hand, and then towards the outside for the last finger. And we're going to use this finger to be able to wrap stuff. One more time. Pinky, scoop, and wrap once, and then come in the front of your hand. And then just let your finger right here just stay towards the outside. That's how you, I would hold the yarn if I were you. But if you have a better way, you can do pinch and throw where you just grab it and just pinch and let it go. That's a pinch and throw method. You can decide what works for you. So we're going to begin by starting with a purl two. And so purl two means that you're going to knit the first two stitches as a purl. To do a purl, you are going to just put the a needle into the top of the, of the loop and down through and stay towards the front of the project. So this should be on the front side as close to you as possible. And I've already made a mistake and I wanna, I wanna leave this in the tutorial. See where the yarn is? It's in the wrong position. So when I go to do the first one, I wanna make sure that I'm coming up underneath that strand and then into there. 
because it's a pearl, I need to have access to that in order to use it. So I'm going to wrap like this. I'm going to use this here and I'm going to wrap around the front needle to wrap. And I'm going to lower it down. And as I lower it, I'm keeping the tension here so that it wants to go with me. So I, when I go down and I move the needle and flick to the back, it's still staying on that needle. Do you see it? And once it's confirmed here to the, to the barrel of your knitting needle, you can confirm to, to slide it off. We're going to do another purl. So next one is just straight on in and stay to the front. Use this and wrap around. And lower and flick to the back. Once you can confirm that it's on your second needle, slide off. The next two are going to be a K2, so a knit two. To do that, you need to move this yarn here between the two needles, like goalposts in football, and towards the back before you begin the stitch. And then the next two are going to be a knit stitch. So instead of coming down in the front, you're going to come up through the bottom and cross over to the back. So this needle here is on the back side. Yarn over by just wrapping around the back needle. And now you're going to flick it forward and capture it. Once you confirm, slide off. You're going to knit the next one. So just immediately just grab it, come up from there, wrap around the back, flick forward. I'm going to demonstrate this several times. The next two are purl stitch. So to do the purl, we have to move the yarn in the front between the goalpost back to the front side again. And you want to go down through the top of the stitch and stay towards the front side. So this needle that you just put in is on the front. Wrap around, shift down and flick towards the back, confirm that it's on there, and then slide. Do the next one. Because the yarn is already in the front, you don't need to reposition that. You just have to just do the second one as a purl and flick to the back and slide. The next two are a knit stitch. So just move the yarn back behind first and then knit stitch. So wrap the back needle, flick forward and slide. Next one, wrap the back needle, flick and slide. I want to show you some anatomy before you go any further. Do you see that these two have lines that are in front like a horizontal? That's when you purled. The ones without it are a knit stitch. So if you need to know what the stitch looks like and you're lost in what you just did, you just have to look to what you can see. So we're going to purl the next two. So move the yarn in front. And it's the yarn that's being carried in the front that is causing that. So you're just going to purl the next two. So you do that one plus the next one. And then you're going to, the next two will be a knit two. And you see that was the yarn that you carried in front and you're going to knit the next two. You're going to do this all the way down the opposite side of the work. Okay. So after you, and your hands will get used to the motion of switching the yarns back and forth for your knit and your purl stitching, but you'll also get it in time that your brain will automatically want to do a knit two, purl two concept. So change back. And so if you're doing this concept all the way to the other side, the last two stitches will be a purl two, if your stitch count is right. You're basically every two stitches is, is either uh, a knit stitch or a purl stitch. And you just have to get used to moving these down your needles in order for you to 
make room. And you will get used to the motion of how soon you need to keep on pushing and you know how much you can keep on knitting. So while this one is being pushed up to the needle, this one is being pushed down as you're moving along. Okay, so I want you to continue in the same motion of doing your knit two, purl two, all the way to the end, and I will see you at the end of the row in a moment, so put me on pause now. So this is gonna be my first cheating technique. The last two stitches should be a purl stitch, and I have an extra two, so maybe I miscounted, right? I'm not gonna panic. It's right at the very beginning, and it's really easily to be hidden. So what I wanna do is when I do a purl, I'm going to capture two stitches at the same time, so going in like that, so you go into two loops instead of just one. Okay, so go into two, and then you can purl around those two. That's a purl two together. So if you believe that you didn't screw up in any way, you can do that. So I'm gonna purl the last two like that and put them together. Because it's right at the beginning, I'm not gonna worry about it so much. And therefore, you have everything all set. So when you look down, this, you'll be able to see the groups of like two knit stitches, two purl, two knit, two purl. It looks a little bit different here, but again, it's at the beginning. I'm not going to worry about it. So we're now going to turn our work and begin row number two. To turn our work, we're just going to switch hands like this. And so the empty needle will be on the right and you're going to begin. In time, you're going to be able to identify the stitches to know what to do instead of having to excessively count. So I can see it already because I've been now two months knitting, but you may not be able to. See these stitches here? See how there's no crossover? When you go to do these two stitches, you're going to knit those. These ones, I wanna keep those exactly where they are, so they need to be purl in order to maintain that. And you're gonna be able to see that in time. And I, when I first started, it's about five rows before I really noticed that. And so it may take you a little bit of time. So row number two, you're gonna start off with knit the two okay so you just knit two and this is going to maintain that ribbing texture that you see do you see these the crossovers those have to be purl so you're just going to immediately move the yarn in front and purl the next two so you can either count knit two purl two and do that or you can look for the signs of what was already there and maintain it. So you can see there's no crossover lines, so those must be a knit stitch to maintain. Okay, so you can see here the two crossing over, so those must be purl, and it was obviously in the pattern as well. So you're gonna knit two, purl two, and etc., and you'll do this all the way to the end. So I'll meet you on the end of the row in just a few moments from now and just maintain what you see and I will be back in a moment. This is row number two. At the end of a row number two, there has to be two knit stitches. So you're just maintaining the pattern. The last two before you can see, they were purls. And so now you're just maintaining the pattern as you see it. So now we're going to rotate our needles again and we're gonna start back on row number one. So the difference between row number one and two is slightly different and I'll explain why. So when you begin row number one, if you notice, is that we started off with a purl two before in row number one, and in row number two, we started off with the knit two. So that's the difference, is that how you're starting begins the sequence differently in order to main the, the, the work, uh, the, in order to maintain the stitch work. So in about five rows, you're gonna see this really settling down and thickening, uh, thickening, uh, thickening up. And so as you begin row number one, you can see that there's crossing overs here. So those are purl stitch. So we wanna maintain that again. And so scooping up underneath the yarn first, and then you can put it onto your hands. And so you'll do a purl for the first two. And you're just following the stitch work as you can see it, or you can count it if you wish. So you can see there's no crossing overs in front. So those must be a knit two. So it's still a knit two, purl two concept. The difference is, is that how you start each of the two rows is different. Okay, so you can see the crossing overs and those two must be a purl stitch. It's important for me to give you those visual cues so that when you're sitting in front of your work and you're like questioning yourself, it's, help, it's helpful to know what you're actually looking at. See, there's no crossovers, 
So those must be a knit stitch. So maintain to do your knit two, purl two, all the way to the opposite side. And we're also gonna talk about what happens when you get across on row number one. So this is a repeat of row number one instruction. When you get to an end of row number one, the last two stitches to maintain the pattern is a purl. Okay, so the last two are purls. And then you're gonna reset and move on to row number two in the instruction again. And you're gonna start seeing the ribbing is taking effect. The more you do, the more it'll appear. And let's begin a repeat of row number two. And then we're gonna to get to um, showing you what to do when you have some mistakes. So in row number two, you can look to what's below. So if you just kind of look below, you can see you have the knit stitch here, you have the purls. So when you start row number two, you wanna maintain what you see. So that for the first two have to be a knit stitch. Okay, and the next two have to be a purl. And you're gonna maintain that all the way down for row number two. And the last two stitches in order to keep the consistent has to be a knit two. So in just a few seconds from now, I want to do this. So I need to repeat rows number one through two all the way until I can get to about 10 inches at states. So let me get all the way to the end of row number two, and then we're gonna talk about repeating those instructions uh, to get to the top of the hat. And then we're also gonna talk about mistakes that you can possibly make in order to help yourself reset instead of having to give up and quit knitting altogether. So I'm coming up to the end of row number two, and I'd have to knit my last two. I'm just keeping in sequence to the pattern. I'm going to quickly turn my needles and I'm going to do a repeat of row number one again. And I have a point to show you, but I can only show you after it's done. And so I'm just going to quickly start in row number one. I'm looking to what was last in. See, these are pearls. So I'm gonna to have to start with my pearl. So look for those visual cues to what stitches you start with. And then you do your first two of those. And then you can see the rest falls into play. Now that I'm getting more onto my needles, it's easier and easier to tell exactly what's below. So let me finish again this row number one, and then we're gonna talk about the growth and then any mistakes that you can fix later. So the pattern states is to repeat rows one and two until the top measures up to 10 inches. So it's from here all the way to the 10. This is going to give you a very significant brim. Now, you will have said a scene in the instructions if you're following it, is that you're going to repeat the instructions ending on a row number one. And how I know it's row number one, see the tail? I've just finished knitting over and the tail is on the right hand side here. So I know that I have finished row number one. So I'm going to start a new row and I'm gonna show you some mistakes. So say for example, I'm just knitting myself across and when I go to pull, that I accidentally pull a stitch off. Okay, so let me just pull one off. You can pull more than one off, but, and then all of a sudden, you, because you're not paying attention or you're new, is that you're, you're getting concerned that it's gonna, the loop is gonna fall out and then you're gonna lose it forever. The orientation, the way that this goes back on, and a small little crochet hook will serve you really well, is that you wanna do it so that when the yarn comes out of this here, it has to go towards the back of the needle, back around the top, and then through the front, okay? So let me just show you that orientation in order for, me to, for that to work, okay? So let me just say, now it's just fallen out completely, so now you're like in trouble. So you can look at the stitch below, and you can see, okay, I was doing purl stitching there, and I wanna match the same configuration of that. So this new one here, in order to create that, if in order to put it back on is that I'm going to stick it through here and I'm just going to pull this loop through. And you have to determine if it's the same. Is it the same? If you said yes, then you're not, you're not right. If you say it's wrong and you caught me, then you're right. Okay, so we can tell that. Why can we tell that? We can tell that because this loop here should have happened and it didn't. So it means that when you pull on it, you're pulled in the wrong direction. So let's just carefully pull that one stitch back out. And so in order for me to have done it that way, I had to go 
like this and pull through. Therefore, what you can do to make this right is, is gently turn your project over and do the same thing on this side. Okay, so just move that tail or that yarn strand over there and just go in the front and pull through and ask yourself a question, does that match the way that it looks? And it does, right? So that's the easiest way to be able to, to replace that back in. But we still have to put it back onto our needle. So just pull up on it a little bit more and put your needles back to where you had started. When the yarn comes out of this stitch, it's on the front. So therefore this has to be on the back to come back over top. So what you have to do is that you have to turn this around so that when you put it on is that the back of the needle is where the yarn went. So you see it went through here, it went through the back, up over the top, and out through the front. And now you just place that orientation back on. Okay, so then we can just um, continue to knit. If you drop many, you just have to be patient and use the same method in order to do that. So I'm just gonna purl a couple more and just show you what it would look like if you dropped a knit stitch. So if you drop this one by accident, okay, and you still have the loop, you're looking to the yarn that comes out the front here, and you gotta make sure that that goes towards the back. So just look at it and follow it, and it goes towards the back. So if I put it on this way, it means that the yarn came out of the front and it's still on the front and went over it back. I have to make sure it has that twist to it. So it comes out the front, follow it, it's at the back and comes back over. If you dropped it and you panicked and it pulled out. Okay, and so maybe when you did that, then you got really panicky and then you pulled out some more and then you're ready to quit and, you know, have some birds, possibly a kitten, maybe even give birth to a cow. You're like, oh my God, don't panic. Just hold still and just pull things. So using your crochet hook, you want to put this back together the way that you saw it. So here it's a knit stitch. So you can just quickly just pull up and test the first one. Does it look the same? Okay, so pull up and does it look like it's gonna be in the same orientation? Okay, and it does. So that means that you can continue just to go to the next one up, pull through like that, make it look the same. And then finally the third one so you can see that you can fall down many rows, but you can put yourself back together, very much like Humpty Dumpty. Now, when you put this back on, make sure that when it comes across the front here, it then goes to the back first. So it came out the front, it's on the back, and then back over, and then you safely have just saved your work. So you can see though, even though the rows below came apart just temporarily, you were able to put it back together so later on in this row, which is a complete accident, I meant for it to happen on its own, um, but I accidentally made a mistake and I changed the stitch work. And you can see that I should have had um, some stitches here that just don't make any sense. And you can see that the orientation looks off because of the way that it's twisting. So further on down the work, I can see that I have made a boo-boo, okay? And I can see that this should have been a knit stitch and I put in a damn pearl. And this one is a knit stitch and this here looks okay. So you can see that I lost my orientation because I was probably daydreaming when the stitches were not aligning properly. And because I was daydreaming for a few um, stitches before I noticed that these are out of order. So I don't wanna panic yet, but I wanna get myself and follow the stitch work as I know it until I get close to that section. So let me just continue to knit, okay? So you don't need to pull anything apart or panic. You wanna fix it when you get there, okay? So you gotta have to earn your way and knit yourself to where the mistake is occurring. You can fix this mistake now, or you can wait a little bit later, but for me, it would be a burning thing in my head if I leave it, knowing that it's there. And uh, like, and every time I see it, I'd be like hurting myself emotionally because I've done that. So if you are an emotional knitter like that, um, you know, fix what you can to get that off your mind. 
uh, for myself, I am I would consider myself an emotional knitter for sure. So what I'm doing is that I'm just knitting myself to where I can see the mistakes happening and I wanna fix them. So I'm getting closer to where the mistakes are. So this is a knit two. So the next two should have been a purl two. Okay, and you can see that it's not lining up properly. Okay, so this should have been a purl two, but then the purl is over here. So I wanna get to where the mistake is showing up first and I want to start right here. To do this, you're going to just move this knitting needles down so that it doesn't slide easily off your needles. And you're going to slide just one stitch only. And we're going to fix three stitches in a row here. So this one's wrong and this one's wrong. Okay, so slide it off. You know how we pulled it apart before? Use a, a crochet hook and pull apart. Just pull up on that and don't panic and move the needles further in so it doesn't slide off. So this one I made backwards by accident. So because this is a purl, the easiest way for me to do it is just to turn the needles around and just grab onto the loop and grab onto the yarn and ask yourself the question, does it look the same as the rest below? And it does. Once you have that done, turn your needles around and place that one back onto there. See where this is? is? You haven't knit this one yet. So you gotta make sure that you put it onto the left-hand side to knit and put it into the orientation of it coming from the front to the back and then over to the front. And we're gonna purl the next two because they're ready to be purled. So just get everything sliding back up and purl. So sometimes, in my case, I may not notice a mistake for several rows. So you can go back down even further like I showed you on the errors. So this one here should have been a knit stitch. See, it's wrong. So I'm just gonna put the yarn in behind just to be ready for that. And I want to push up my needles again and let just the one off. Okay, we're gonna just use your hands or your hook and pull up, pull that out, and then go back into that loop bead that you have and pull that yarn through to the front. It's a knit stitch, so you can do that easily. And now does it look the same as below? Yes or no? And if it does, then just put it back onto your knitting needles in the right orientation. And so you can continue and you can see here, I have three pearls in a row, so I must have made a mistake. So I was daydreaming for a few times. And don't think that we don't daydream, it, it just naturally happens. So don't be beating yourself up over this. You're not that special. We all make mistakes and you have to come to accept that about yourself. Okay. You can feel special, but don't feel special because you're the only one that doesn't make, uh, that makes mistakes. So you can see that my orientation is wrong here. It should have been a knit stitch. So again, just push up. Do you hear me panicking? No, but I would have panicked a couple months ago, I have to admit. So you just pull out, okay? And if it's down even further, you keep on pulling out and then just reset it by pulling it through the loop from the proper orientation to change the way that it looks and put back on. Okay, and then you can knit as you normally would have. So it's not so hard, right? So these are the ways to fix your errors. So if you have your big panel and you see an error like several rows below, what you can do is do the same orientation and just come on down. You will notice sometimes I was a little bit um, more um, generous and sometimes in the loops. Um, that just naturally happens because you're trying to find your way, but eventually you'll have to get to the top of your uh, project in order to finish. And we're gonna be doing shaping the top of the hat next. So now I'm ready to shape the top of the hat. You should know that when I started this sample, I did a twist and transfer. So row number one for me is that the tail is on the left. If you've done it the way that I showed you already at the beginning of the tutorial, the tail will be on the right when you finish a row number one. We're now going to continue. So you can do the, uh, the reduction on both your circular or your straight needles, and you're going to switch your hands and we'll begin row number one of shaping the top of the hat next. 
We're going to start and you're just going to be able to maintain the pattern as you know it. So we're gonna start and the first two, do you see how they're knit stitches already that you're gonna to have to maintain? So you know that you're ready uh, and basically looking at a row two when you turned. So you're going to knit the first two. So K2. Okay. And then you're going to a purl the next two together. So these are two purl stitches. So move the yarn in front. And instead of just grabbing one, I want you to grab two. So going in and capturing two of the loops. And then you're going to yarn over the front side because it's a purl and rotate down towards the back and slide. So you've now just purled two together. So to repeat this row, you're just going to move your yarn back and you're going to knit the first two. So one and two. And then you're going to purl the next two together. So move the yarn in front first and purl these two. So you got one and two. Wrap and push to the back. So the purling is basically being decreased by one stitch. So knit the next two and then purl two together. And I want you to repeat this going all the way across. And I'll be back at the end of the row in just a few moments. So I'm coming across on row number one, the last two stitches should be knit two. So one knit in each of the last two. Let's turn our work and do row number two, shaping at the top of the hat. In row number two, we're not going to do any decreases, but we're going to maintain what we already see. So we're going to begin by purling the first two in. Okay, so we're going to purl these two. This is why I like using circulars on camera, that the clicking gets on my nerves, and I'm sorry about that. So we're going to purl the first two, and then we're going to knit the next one. And if you can look carefully, you can see that, that it's a knit. So you're just going to knit. Okay. So then you're going to purl the next two. Just by themselves, not together. And then you're going to knit the next one. And you're going to do this all the way across. And so the last two stitches when you get there will be a purl two, so like purl uh, in each of the last two. Please do this all the way across. This is row number two, shaping of the top of the hat. So I came across in number two, the last two were purl. We're going to turn our work and do number three. Let's do that next. In row number three, there is no reduction again. It's just maintaining what you can see. The first two are knit. The next one is a purl. And you're just going to repeat that all the way across. Okay, so knit the first two. And then you're going to purl the next. You can clearly see what the stitches are. So hopefully that helps you. So, the, so you repeat that. So move the yarn behind, knit the next two. And then purl the next one. Please repeat this all the way across. This is row number three. And the last um, stitches that you'll have will be um, K2 right at the end. So knit two for the very end of this row. Let's do this and I'll see you on row number four in a moment. So let's begin row number four, which is the same as number two. It's the first two are going to be purl stitches. And you can see that evidence of that on your project. So there's no de decreasing in this row again. And so the next one has to be a knit stitch and you can follow it up and see that it is. Okay, so the repeat going across is you'll purl the next two knit the next one, and then just maintain the pattern as you can see it across, and we'll start row number five in a moment. Let's begin row number five. So you're going to follow the pattern as you see it. So we're going to start off immediately, and you can see that there's two knit stitches in a row and then a purl, and then two knit and a purl. So what we want to do is start off, and we're going to put the needle in so that we're collecting two stitches in the knit stitch format, and you're going to knit the two together. You're then going to purl the next one. Sorry, the knitting needles, the long ones really get on my nerves for the tutorial work. Okay, so then you're gonna purl the next one. Let me just reset my hands here. Okay, and then 
you're going to then knit the two together so that the yarn before uh, in the back. And the way that I'm holding the, uh, this, this is called pinch and throw. So I'm gonna do that. Okay, so you, you don't have to change that. I'm just doing it to prevent the banging on the table, which is driving me nuts. So you'll purl the next one and then knit the next two together and do that all the way across and maintain your pattern. And I will see you at the end of the row in just a moment. When you get to the end of number five, it doesn't say that you're putting the last two stitches together. It actually says K2, which is just meaning that the last two stitches are just a knit stitch. So don't put those two together right at the end or you'll have some issues. <laughs> Not that you don't have enough issues on your own. So let's turn our work and begin number six. So number six is not a decrease and you wanna start off in the very beginning and you're going to start off with the P2. So you're gonna purl the first two first on their own. Okay, so you'll purl these two. And then you're gonna begin the sequence all the way to it takes you to the end. You can see this is a knit stitch that follows up. So you wanna do that as a knit stitch. And then the next one has to be a purl. Okay. So you're gonna just bounce between the two stitches all the way across. So the next one is a knit. And then the next one is a purl. Please do this all the way to the end and you can finish with, um, what is it? K2, purl one. So you'll be finishing with a purl one at the end. I'll be right back. So number six is done. It was a purl one at the end as it should be. And now let's do your final row, number seven. And it's gonna be a nice, easy row, if it hasn't already been easy for you. And what we're going to do is that we're going to knit stitch two together all the way across. Okay, so make sure you go into the two at the same time. And you're just gonna do that. So there's no more purling, you're done with that. So you get the first two, put them together, get the next two, do a knit stitch, put them together. So something is wrong if you see more, more than that coming through. So just try again. Be a little bit fussy within yourself. If you see something that doesn't look right, you'll struggle with it later. Okay, so let's see, I'm, get, I'm catching a ply of something else. So I think I wanna leave this in the tutorial instead of retaking because it's so important that you see this. As a kid, I always ended up with extra stitches and I realized when I was sticking my knitting needles going through, I was actually going through plies and not through the actual yarn itself. And so then that becomes a real problem. So now you just keep on doing the stitch two together all the way across and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm now finished. Okay, so now what do we have to do? We have to trim this yarn long enough from the, uh, from the yarn ball so that we can not only put the top together, but we can also go down the side with the same yarn. So don't be cheap about it. Okay, so let's do that. Now we haven't done the fastening off at the top yet. And what we're gonna do as a beginner is that we want to just put in this and slide the needle with the yarn already attached into the stitch work. Okay, and so maybe you can grab two at a time and just start pulling through. Once you've confirmed that you have this onto that strand, you can safely slide off the needles, the ones that you've already done. Okay, you can just do that. They're already captured. They will not come out uh, undone for you. Okay, so don't slide off before you get it in there though. <laughs> okay, so just do that and you can use your needles to kind of pull it off as well and just pull some strand through just to hold and do the next two and do all the way to the end. What I would strongly recommend is don't worry about pulling the top closed until you get all of them off the needle first and therefore it'll be more equal when you go to pull. So remind me at another point to put in some felt pads at the end of my needles. <laughs> okay, so you're gonna go all the way to the end, that's it. So now we wanna pull the top shut Okay, so it's all just holding on there. So just pull, 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 pull. And what I would recommend to you is just attach this into the other side. Okay, and so when you pull, it's gonna pull this into a complete circle. So pull, 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 and there you go. Okay, 
And what I like to do to fasten off is that I like to just go across directly from where it came out. And then I go in a cross formation. So I, I will go this side and over. And so now we have to go down the seam line. So when we go to do this, we're just gonna capture in the outside loop. So this one to this one. And what I wanna do is keep an eye on the base here so that when we go to sew, it looks pretty even. And so you're just staying on the outside here and going down the side. Now it says that I'm on the outside doing this right at the moment. So it says that when you get to the brim area to flip it upside down, and what that wants you to do is that it's gonna put the line so that it won't be so obvious on the opposite side. So when you get close to the bottom, what you might want to do, so maybe if you want this to be the brim, just flip it inside out and then just continue in the same formation on the other side and it will keep the seam line looking really good. You can decide what works for you. Remember in any yarn arts that is online or in books or whatever you decide, you are ultimately the creator of your master or of your own universe and how you do things. So as long as you're consistent, it usually looks good. In crochet, I, there's never really truly any mistakes. It's um, if as long as you continue to make the same mistake over and over and over, it looks consistent. Okay, so that's what I would recommend. So I'm going to go all the way down and capture this in place. Um, by now, people would have already commented, where's the child size version? This is only available, um, this pattern in adult version. We find that more crocheters that learn to knit are adults and are probably going to want to create something for themselves. But of course, there's always free patterns on yarnspirations.com for children's size um, hats, maybe even in this formation. We do have a bulky hat available for children's sizes already filmed up if you want that. And that's something that you can decide for yourself. So let me just go down all the way and I'll be right back in a moment. So I'm almost near to the bottom. So if I wanted a brim, what I would wanna do is that if you look at the other side, it looks completely different. Okay, but it looks actually pretty consistent here. It's never gonna be absolutely perfect. The only way they get perfect um, in all the way around is to do knitting in the round, which we do have a tutorial available for that. So if you once you get to the brim, what it would want you to do is just flip up Okay, so flip it inside out like this and then continue to um, work its magic and just stay on the inside of the joints here. Okay, and that's going to change the direction so that you have the consistency on the opposite side when you do the flip up. Okay, do you see that? I would have never thought to do that. So this is kind of like, I'm learning to knit as, as I pointed out. So um, this is one of those concepts I never really kind of thought about. And you're gonna go right to the top here. So therefore it comes down, looks pretty consistent. And then because I flipped it and did this side here, it looks pretty consistent. To finish off any loose ends that you'll have, I want you to tie this into a knot. Just be very nice about it though. And if you're doing the brim, favor the opposite side here so that when you flip it up it's in the inside if it's a beanie flip uh favor the inside okay so of the project so you have to decide what's going to work for you once you have that done then you're just going to just pull through and let it capture onto itself so it's already been tied into a knot once do it so that it's splitting up some plies um, it will not follow as much as if you go through the plies versus going between stitch work and if you want to tie another knot somewhere, you can. And just be nice about it. Okay. Once you have that done, you can safely cut. And then the starting strand that you would have started with, you want to take care of that as well. Sometimes there's a bit of a spatial dif difference between where you started. And so that's not a big deal. Simply just reach across and pull it back over. Okay. And then again, you can tie your little knot into it so that it won't come out done. And then you can just weave in your ends like you did before. So the trick is, is to weave it in a total of three times back and forth. Okay. 
and then therefore you have your hat. So you have it, you can flip it now if you wanted to. And when you look at it from a clearly a perspective, so you can see where I was loose on some set stitches, give it a bit of tug, don't be scared of it. And you actually might pull that back into alignment by doing that. And you may surprise yourself that you're capable of more than you thought. Okay, and then you can flip up, try it on and see what you think. And this is a great starting hat that will get you started with knitting. That's it for today. We hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.